I'm Dr. Dave Nichol and welcome to Freewheeling, the veterinary business Q&A show. Uh, so today's question comes from... Estefania Colon. Who has asked the question, what does Estefania ask? Um, the, the question is, what is the hardest thing about being a veterinary blogger? What is the hardest thing about being a veterinary blogger? Um, okay, that's a great question, Estefania, and I think it's very relevant because a lot of people have blogs we're calling them blogs now. We used to call them news pages. Some people still do. The ironically titled news page that has no news on it whatsoever, except maybe from a newsletter you posted in 2013, which is about as dull and awful as content gets on the internet. Stop doing that. You're breaking the internet with that kind of rubbish. So what's a better way of doing it? Well, number one, Esteban is buying on the money. Blogs are a good way of doing that, uh, but they do take a little bit of effort. You do have to know how to write. You do have to have something to write about. Um, and and it's just a content crush like because if you're going to publish a blog once a week probably nobody's going to listen probably that's not enough content that's what I did for three years four years something like that and you get to a certain level and a certain number of people will listen but your numbers aren't going to keep growing and growing and growing you've got to get more uh, content out there than that and that takes a lot of effort you know I was writing two blogs one blog a week for a whole year uh, on top of doing proper, you know, normal work, day-to-day -day work stuff, um, and it takes a lot out of you. You have to pound a lot of pound a lot of keyboard time in doing that. So, what's a way that you can make that actually doable and accessible in practice? Well, I stumbled upon a really awesome formula, which I'm going to share with you just now, um, and that is: don't try and come up with ideas or articles or frameworks or templates or anything like that. The best advice I can give for you, and this is a this actually doubles up as a great piece of life advice as well. Each each of you, I strongly advise as just a way of improving your sanity and organizing your thoughts, should journal every day. Uh, just write something. Just take five, ten minutes at the start of every day and write something about whatever's going on in your life. Now, as, as veterinarians, we have some amazing stuff happening in our lives. Like, I would far rather be a veterinarian blogging about that than somebody who's selling fridges, refrigerators, having to blog about white goods. That could be a little bit dull, right? Or blenders, blogging about blenders. Yet Blendtec found a really cool way to do that. They started mashing up iPhones and handguns and showing that the Blendtec could work really well. Like if they can find something interesting to write about blenders, you can find something interesting to write about puppies or poo or chocolate vomits or you know whatever it is that's out there that's kind of cool and it's happening. The important part is doing it in your voice, having a personality because why is that important? Because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Never forget that. How do they get to know you? Frequency of contact, okay? If a pet owner is coming into your practice once a year and they see a different vet every time, then they're not gonna get to know you. They're not gonna be able to build up the like and the trust, okay? If you're pushing content at them that reflects your personality every week, something on video or something written piece or whatever whatever mode it is you choose, whether it's blogging or whether it's, it's video content or audio content, doesn't matter. But if you're pushing something at them every week that reflects your personality, just as I am doing with you now, then you're, at, you're gonna get to know me. You may get to like me or I might drive you crazy. That's fine, I don't, I don't much care which that is. Uh, if you get to know me and you get to like me though, then you're part of my tribe and I'm hoping that I will build trust with you so that eventually when the need comes, you will find some use for a product or service that I offer you. Okay, so I do all of this work freely and give, give my time, give my knowledge quite freely in the form of blogs, in the form of podcasts, in the form of speaking, in the hope that I'm building a relationship with you for the future. That's exactly what you have to do with your clients. So how do you do that? Well, journal about some cool stuff that happened in your day. I'm gonna name check out Guy, um, who is, is one of the guys that, that um, oh, I've totally blanked in the name of the business. Emma, tell me about the Riverford, Organic vegetables, is that right? Is that ringing a bell? Riverford Organic Vegetables, I think that's the name of the business. That's who I get all my veg from. Um, and Guy has this, he just sends this like A4 bit of paper with some a couple of recipes on it that are pretty basic, what's in the veg box, and then Guy's little blog. It can be no more than five or 600 words long, and it's just some interesting shit that's in his brain that week. Like there's no coherence to it, it's written from the heart, it, it talks of his personality, it's, it's infused with passion, you can tell that he gives a monkeys about the job he does, he loves the job he does, and as a customer that helps me get to know him, get to like him, get to trust him, which makes me want to buy my vegetables from him in a 
pretty cutthroat consumer driven market i'm paying over the odds one of the reasons is because i get to know guy and his vegetables okay so all you got to do is start coming up with and journaling and documenting what happens to you every day what made you happy what made you sad what broke your heart uh, what made you laugh out loud? What had the team in stitches? What grossed everybody out so much like it just made you want to puke? Like anything that makes a veterinary surgeon or a veterinary nurse want to puke is something you can write about. It's going to get attention, right? So find content that engages people in that fashion. If you can do that, then you can write about that. You're going to have a good audience. You're going to have a local following. You can start to become the pet celebrity. And the writing of blogs becomes easy because you're not searching around for your top five ways to do this, that, or the other. Okay? It's good content. It grabs people. But you can also write goofy content. So some of my best and funniest articles were one of them was about anal glands. And we talked about why do doggies do anal pirouettes? Like you try Googling anal pirouettes and you're gonna get some crazy stuff and a blog from me probably coming up in there. And we talked about Sydney's pet poo, pet poo problem and all the landmines that were on Sydney streets and why it was disgusting. Uh, we talked about why bones, it was crazy to, to feed dogs bones. We took, we had opinions, we took a stand on common issues, we courted controversy um, and we weren't afraid to have those opinions. And what that did was start building the tribe of people who like our stuff because you're not trying to make everybody like you in fact it's not gonna work it's never gonna happen somebody will always be a hater somebody will always not like something you're doing so don't even try and make those people happy just write for you write stuff that you believe in write stuff you're passionate about write stuff that matters to you and you will attract other people who feel the same way about you assuming you're not completely crazy in which case you're gonna attract other crazy people but they'll be like you so you'll get on fine with them so it's all okay in the end all right how is that? I hope that was useful for you. Um, if you like the, 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 the post, is it a post? Is it an episode? It's more of an episode. It's probably all of those things because we're going to post this as some written content. Here's another little tip for you. You want to make your maximum of your content, then we're doing a little video post just now. It's going to go out as audio. It's going to go out as video. It's going to go out as a, uh, a, a, a written post because somebody's going to make a summary of that and that'll go out as a blog post and we're going to get little sound bites and we're going to max out the sound bites. See, there's a little sound bite I just gave you. It looks like some dumb picture of me in front of a gorgeous wall that somebody took. Get a picture of the walls here. Like this, show the alleyway. This alleyway just kicks ass. Isn't this a good alleyway? Like, we come out in here so often to try and record. That's not a good bit. Yeah. That bit sucks. <laughs> But all the way down here, there's just like epic graffiti back to me, back to me. Um, epic graffiti all down here. And so we get some pictures of me looking a bit straight and down with the kids, pulling some funny faces in front of the graffiti with sound bites. Like, and that's content, micro content. In one little 10 minute blog, I can repurpose that thing to create enough content probably for a month if I play my cards right. Okay, so it doesn't have to be hard to generate that content. You just gotta be smart. You gotta find ideas that connect here and here, and then they'll finally, they'll start connecting out there. And don't forget the formula. People have to know you, like you, trust you. Get that down, you're off to winner. That's it, it's my marketing tip for today. We're out, we didn't get run down by anybody, and I don't think there's wind noise. Till next time on Freewheeling, this is Dr. Dave. Be safe, be well, be happy, and I will see you out there somewhere. <laughs>